Hey everyone, Justice Good here, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can add a realistic shadow to an object or a person in Photoshop, like so. So let's work on our original photo here and take it to step one. The first thing you want to notice about your photo is where the light source is coming from. Now, of course, this is an example that already kind of has some shadows, but I'm going to add a shadow just for the purpose of showing you how. So the light source seems to be coming from overhead, but just to exaggerate this effect a little bit, I'm going to go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare, and add my own bit of a light source in the top right corner. That way our shadow will be projected to the bottom left, just like in real life. So pay attention to your photo, and also this only works with a photo that you can see from head to toe on the person or object. Now grab your quick selection tool and make sure it's set to the plus option and just click and select your photo. This works best on photos with simple backgrounds like the one I'm using here. Now there's a little bit of this selection that's going past the guy's actual foot and into the stairway here so I'm just going to grab my rectangular marquee tool set it to subtract from selection and just subtract that little edge off so it's a cleaner selection. Now we can head back to our quick selection tool and select refine edge. You can see it's a little bit choppy so all you want to do is turn the smoothness up a little bit even turn the feathering up a little bit and shift the edge a little bit to the left. This is a shadow so we don't have to be too precise. Now you can right click and layer via copy. But we want to turn this completely black so go to image adjustments curves and grab the top right part of this line here and drag that point all the way down so it's a flat line and it will make your image black. Now we want to edit transform our selection. So you can go to Edit Free Transform or Command T and just hold Shift and drag it all the way down until it flips over on itself. And you can even drag it really far out to stretch the shadow out. Again, grab your Move tool and adjust the movement so that it connects at the base of your actual image. You can also go to Edit Transform Skew and take the top slider here and move it to the right a little bit. I'm just going to adjust the setting here until it's at the right angle with my lighting source. So I think something around here looks pretty good. I'm even going to shrink it back down a little bit. And I think that's a good angle and a fitting shadow. So once you have the shadow where you want change the opacity slider to something around 60 to 70 percent. I'm using 67. Now grab your blur tool at a strength of 100 percent and a large soft round brush and just blur the edges of the shadow. Now you can't tell but I'm making multiple brush strokes. That means I'm clicking and letting go multiple times. Try not to blur the object at the base to get a more realistic looking effect. Now what we're going to do is adjust the shadow to look like it's draped over these steps. So I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to select the first two steps, and I'm just going to grab my move tool and move it to the left a little bit. It's about right, so I'm going to right click and deselect, and then grab the bottom step, grab my move tool and move it a little more to the left. So now it looks like the shadow is being draped down these steps. Again I'm going to grab my blur tool now and just work on the details a little bit to make it look a bit more realistic. Now you want to head over to layer, layer mask and select reveal all and then grab your brush tool and use a large brush with a 0% hardness. 
and set it to about 25% opacity. Now using the color black, we're just going to paint on this layer mask on the very edges of the shadow. That way it gets thinner and harder to see as it gets further away from the object. And once you combine all these little details, you should get a pretty realistic looking shadow. So there's your before and after. Usually I try to make my tutorials a little more easy to replicate step by step, but the key to this one is really in the details and it's going to be specific to your photo. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.